dreads getting the common cold. Nobody wants a cold. That's for sure. <laughs> and if you just go to a pharmacy and you look at all these shelves, there's like cold remedies everywhere. And most of them have some pretty toxic effects, but they can also maybe mask some of the symptoms a little bit. A lot of them, I think, just make you feel worse. But there are healthy things that people can try. And one of them that just came out in the news is about the zinc lozenges. Now, many people have tried zinc lozenges for sore throats, but this study is about shortening the duration of a cold. So in other words, once you've already got the cold and the cat's out of the bag, if you can take like about 10 lozenges a day, mm -hmm. It'll shorten the duration of the cold. Substantially. You're talking about several days, less coughing, less runny nose. You feel better and recover quicker. But the secret is, is how much zinc, zinc are you taking? How much do you need? And there were at least 10 or 12 studies that were done, and they showed kind of divided results. Some of the studies showed that it didn't work, and some of the studies showed that it did work. And somebody finally got the brilliant idea of saying, well, how much zinc did they actually take? sort of like a little detail. It might have been something that they so would have the considered. So the large amounts of 75 milligrams At least that work. much of zinc acetate or, or zinc glycinate are, are the right things to do. And if it gives you a little bit of a metallic taste, of course, you can always stop. I mean, you don't have to keep taking that Or you that can much. mask it with something else. It's okay. I mean, there are a lot of things that you can use to mask it. And what does the zinc actually do? Well, it does something, first of all, to to kill the rhinovirus. It, it stops uh, the virus from replicating at the normal speed that it will. And about 80% of our colds, at least during the winter time, are probably caused by that virus. It also causes uh, changes in immune boosting, so it'll make your immune system stronger. And it, it makes interferon, which is a chemical inside the cell that keeps other cells from being uh, vulnerable to viral invasion. So these are things that are important, that do a lot, that finally we're saying does something. What are some foods where you can get zinc? I think you get some in meat, right? Meat, yeah. People who are vegetarians very often have low zinc levels. And you have to be careful because if you're going to take over a long term a fair amount of zinc, you also have to take copper because they have the same transport system in the intestinal tract that determines how much is going to be absorbed of one or the other. So you need a balance. So you need a little balance of but those But what we're things. talking about mostly is just for the duration of the cold. Sure, so if you just take it, it for two or three days, that's probably sufficient. And it also helps with the sore throat to boot. Well, you know, there are other things, too, that can help with the, with the common cold that are, that are natural. Mm -hmm. In fact, we've found ourselves <laughs> that large doses of vitamin D, if you can take that, like, right at the beginning mm -hmm. of your symptoms, just cuts the cold out. Right. Well, keep in mind, we're not giving advice. We're giving information. So we're not trying to tell you what you should do. We're, at, we're giving you information that you should review and discuss with your health, health care practitioner. And vitamin D doses that Vicki and I take personally are 50 to 100,000 units a day for three or four or five days. There were some interesting studies done in Germany, I don't know, 30, 40 years ago, that showed that for viral influenza, that this was a very effective way to stop uh, the influenza from being such a serious illness and would be far more effective than using the, the, the swine flu vaccine, say, for example. So You have to be careful about saying things like that. Yeah, but it's the truth. I mean, I wrote a whole <laughs> article published in a Townsend letter called The Infection Deception, which talked about all the baloney that went into publicizing that the swine flu vaccine was a good idea. Well, Andrew Weil got into a lot of trouble for recommending... What astragalus. Oh, yeah, astragalus. Well, that was at a time when the FDA was getting screwy. I mean, they were trying to stop anything that had to do with uh, natural supplements from being a solution. And, of course, that's probably because of their incestuous relationship with the FDA. But another thing that's helpful for a common cold is vitamin C. Real good. And it can be taken orally uh, in doses of up to 30 or 40 grams a day, depending on what your system what you will can tolerate. tolerate. That's a and lot. it's not for everybody because some people taking those doses of vitamin C would get into trouble. So again, you need to talk Meaning here. GI problems. Not just GI problems. You, if you have renal failure, it can actually oh. cause something called systemic oxalosis. So we're looking at something that could be a very severe problem that could be lethal in that setting. Well, and vitamin C intravenously oh. Oh, is oh, also yeah. another really good way to go. If you have a severe viral infection, something like acute uh, infectious hepatitis, that would be the treatment of choice in my book. I'd probably give somewhere between 50 and, and 200 grams of intravenous vitamin C a day in the hospital setting so it could be given as a continuous drip. 
And it obviously wouldn't disturb your stomach because you were getting it intravenously. Exactly. You know, too, when you have a cold, obviously you need to get enough rest and reduce your stress. The and, common sense things. Yeah, all the time. Drink, drink a lot of fluids and, and all the rest of the healthy lifestyle things. Mm -hmm. But there are other things, too, that can boost the immune system, like mataki mushrooms. There are a whole bunch of mushrooms that do that, and they're, they're very good at making immunity better by stimulating the... Uh, the T cells that we have in our body that kill viruses. Our antibody system doesn't attack viruses, it mostly attacks bacteria. The T cells, which are actual cells rather than antibodies, kill the virus by attaching to it, poking holes in it, and everything leaks out. Cool. And so it increases <laughs> the number of T cells. And then things like vitamin A, another good thing. So to, eat your carrots? <laughs> well, that, that'll that help. Uh, I think mostly that's for people who have a terrible diet, maybe that, that don't eat vegetables or live in third world countries where uh, they're malnourished. They're malnourished. That's probably the leading cause of blindness in the world is vitamin A deficiency. It causes that as well. But it also has profound immunosuppressive uh, activity if you don't have enough around. And also, if you already have the cold and you're having some trouble breathing, your nose is stuffy, you know, humidifier is a really good idea. And also using a neti pot, mm -hmm. that's another another thing that, that's, irrigate that's your pretty sinuses helpful. And wash yeah. them out. If you have a sore throat, some ginger tea. I love to do that. That was Michael Murray's little tip I, I learned about 20 years <laughs> ago. He said, take about a half an inch strip of ginger and uh, chop that up in little pieces and put a whole lemon into a couple of cups of water and heat it up. And a little Manuka honey is a Man good idea. Real good idea. And it sweetens it up a little bit too. And that usually takes care of the sore throat and a lot of the cold symptoms. Well, another thing is if you have pain from like a sinus infection, mm -hmm. photon stimulator can be helpful The infrared for light therapy actually can, I think, affect the virus itself. And I, I know um, when I have a cold, one of the first things I do if I have a sore throat is I'll just put the photon stimulator uh, right next to my throat as close as I can and leave it on for about 10 or 15 minutes. And very often the pain just disappears and so does the cold. Of course, not everybody's so lucky to be No, you to have, have to have one. Photo That's stimulator. right. And of course, a lot of research needs to be done on that too, but it hasn't been done yet. So we're looking at a wide range of things that can be done, but zinc is, is the big thing we're trying to get across in this particular article. And now that we know that zinc works, as long as you take enough of it and in the right form, Chances are that if you get your cold and you take it, it's going to cut back your symptoms by probably 30 to 40, sometimes even 50%.